So my last video was on rhythm and timing and how to use the metronome when you're practicing and you want to work on your timing. In this video, I want to talk about comping. So for jazz guitarists, a lot of times people ask me if I can make a lesson on comping and how do you comp in jazz? It's such a huge topic. It's kind of hard to answer that question because it all depends on what kind of situation we're talking about. Are you playing in a trio or are you playing with a piano player what kind of jazz is it old jazz early jazz or is it modern it's very different if you're playing you know, on a wedding gig you know, there's a vocalist and you're you know like a cocktail jazz gig as opposed to if you are playing on village vanguard with chris potter the way you would comp a jazz standard would be very different so this is going to be just kind of basic for uh, not beginners necessarily, but uh, if you're not sure how to comp in a combo, let's say you're playing with drums and bass. So I'm gonna give you some ideas on how to do that. And we are gonna recommend some books during this video that I think are good for this stuff. I think most people realize at some point that comping in jazz, if we're playing in a kind of straight ahead jazz situation, is different from other styles of music because we're not playing like a static pattern we're not comping like a static rhythm well you could do that and sometimes you do that and you do that in early jazz but if you're playing like somewhat modern jazz post bebop jazz it's kind of uh, you're kind of interacting with the soloist and the other musicians and there's a lot of emphasis on upbeats so i can't really give you like a specific this is the rhythm to use but rather you have to get used to playing on all the different beats of the bar. So we're gonna start by doing that. So it's gonna be a little bit continuing on the last lesson I made on how to use the metronome. We're gonna play chords over the tune Solar, the Miles Davis tune Solar, and we're just gonna play on the different beats and the different upbeats of the bars. Normally you don't play on beat one or you try to avoid playing too much on beat one because it's kind of uh, not very interesting but we'll start with that just for the purpose of the exercise to go through all the different beats so we're going to play solar and what are the voicings we're going to play we're not going to focus too much on voicings in this lesson i've made videos about that before we're just going to focus on the rhythmic aspect so let's just keep it real simple and play guide tones so the first chord is c minor if i play on the middle set of strings the, the seventh and the third. That's all you need. That's one thing you need to understand that you don't really need a big chord. It's actually better to leave space for the soloist, but we need kind of, our job is to guide us through the harmony. So that's why we play these so-called guide tones, the third and the seventh. And then there's a G minor. C7, F major 7, just playing the 3rd and 7th, F minor 7, B flat 7, E flat major 7, E flat minor 7, A flat 7, D flat major 7, D minor 7 flat 5, so I'm just playing the 3rd 7, so it doesn't matter that it's a flat 5. G7 and then it starts over so let's just do that on beat one so you could play them short or you could play them long so I'm gonna use my app iReal Pro I can't recommend this app enough I recommend this in almost every video you really need to get this app and people still ask what is the app you're using it's iReal Pro 
okay? What's really good about this is that you can, or well, many things are good about this, but one thing that is really good is that you can, there's a mixer that you can turn down the piano. So now we're the comping instrument. So this is a jazz medium upswing, 166 BPM. We're short. One, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. What was that? Could be long or short. It's perfectly fine to not play the bass note. You could play the bass note, but you don't have to, and it's better to not play, at least not all the time. But sometimes it's nice to play the bass note as well, or the fifth as a bass note. Whatever note I can grab on the bottom string. So obviously it's very different if there is no bass player then or you're just playing guitar or comping a vocalist then I would play the bass notes obviously. So another thing that is important to understand here is that if I play the third and the seventh here that means that I can. There's another place on the same set of strings where I can also play that chord. I could play the the third and the seventh like that instead. So there's two different ways to play a third seventh of any chord on any set of strings. Meaning I could play here or here. This is a fourth, the inversion of a fourth is a fifth. You should practice both. I'm just doing one of them for the sake of this video. Okay, now let's just do it on beat two instead. One, two, three. play on beat three we're still doing downbeats but now on beat three now when there's two chords in a same bar like E flat to A flat to D flat I have to play the second chord of those two chords right because that's where the beat falls so I'm gonna play G7 not the D minus seven flat five you'll see what I mean one two three one, two, three Beat four, I talked a lot about the beat four in my previous lesson. That's where you need to anticipate. You don't have to, but you should definitely be able to, especially if you play a long chord. You need to uh, play the chord of the next bar. So it's gonna be C, C minor, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So I play the G minor on beat four of that bar because you have to realize that music is moving forward, right? So there's that forward motion, which is a, 
a buzzword for jazz teachers. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, G. Now we're going to play on the upbeats. In jazz, we, there's a lot of emphasis on the upbeats. You have to get used to the idea of playing upbeats. By the way, I'm kind of plucking these chords. Even though I'm using a pick, I'm, I'm using my fingers to kind of pluck them. I'm not strumming them. Which you could totally do, but I think it sounds different and better in this case to pluck them. There's a video with uh, Mike Marino when he talked about that, that we don't play like this when we play piano, right? The brrrang, we play goom. And as a guitar player, you should be able to do the same. That doesn't mean that you can't do that too. That's cool. But right now I'm plucking them. So if we play them short, it's going to be more like percussive. And let's add some more notes to the chords. Let's add something on the next string. So the second string, we could add a note. We could add the G to the first chord. We could add an A to the G, which is the ninth. Maybe if A flat, so that's an altered chord. Add a G to the F. So we could add a chord tone, like it could be the fifth, or the roots even, or it could be an extension, like in this case, the ninth. Let's keep that note. Alter the sharp five. And then I'm gonna play the the, the D on that chord, so it's like a, the root. And then And on the upbeats of one. One. Or long. So there I added some more to play the, all the chords. Let's do it. Two and now, if there is two chords in the same bar, I have to anticipate the second of those chords. One, two, and one, two, and could add a F on that C minor. And some of you are thinking, well, shouldn't that first chord be a C minor major seven? Yes. So that's another thing. It's a minor major seven and you should play that sound, a melodic minor. It could be minor six, minor major seven, or nine, six, nine. But, Here's the thing, if you do that too much, every time, you know, the, this is a short form, so the chorus is gonna, this chord is gonna come back. If you play like a melodic minor chord there every time, it's like you're dictating too much to the soloist what he or she should be playing. It's, when you're soloing, it's kind of bothering you or me if the piano player is always playing that melodic minor chord, because then I have to kind of, I have to play that sound. So it's better to leave it open you should definitely play it every now and then and try to listen to what the others are doing 
if they're using that melodic minor sound, you should be able to pick up on that and do that. But don't uh, do it too much. One aspect of this jazz comping is that you're backing up the soloist. There's interaction between you and the other musicians and the soloist. A little bit different depending on different uh, situations. Sometimes there's a, uh, you might be, everybody's like interacting together. And sometimes it's more of a soloist moment to shine and you're comping. Either way, you don't want to get in the way of the soloist. You want to fill, it, fill in the spaces and respond. So that's why you need big ears to be able to hear. Is that a melodic minor that they're playing? Well, then you play that. Or you play something that is neither. I could play this. That's a C minor 9. It doesn't have a 7th in it. So then it's, uh, it's open. Obviously, there's also a lot of options for extensions. So C minor could be the 11th, could be a 5th. I wouldn't use the 6th there. Or maybe. And then it, it could be a melodic minor chord. The G minor. The C could be a 13th. Or sharp 5, flat 5. F major 7, 9, or the root on top, you know, and you should be able to create melodies with the top notes. Because the top note is what you hear the most, so that should be like a nice melody. It's also something that uh, Mike Marino talks about in that lesson uh, video. I'll see if I can find that video and I'll link to it. If you listen to someone, a great piano player, a great guitar player, or whatever, comping, there'll be a nice melody on top of whatever they're doing. So. So there, I just kind of had like, this is a very good book for this stuff. The Three Note Voicings and Beyond by Randy Vincent. I've talked about this video, or sorry, I've talked about this book in previous videos where he talks about exactly that. How to use guide tones and add a note. It could also be spreading out the guide tones and adding an extension between. a different set of strings right now we're just doing it a same set of strings so if you want to look into that stuff I really strongly recommend that book because he goes through all the kind of possibilities when it comes to playing guide tones and adding extensions all right so we'll have to do four and same thing but I'm gonna play two notes so this exercise is from a book called how to comp I think by Hal Cook is that his name and I can't find that book I wanted to buy it and I found it on a German website but it turned out to be an Italian translation of the book which I don't want so it seems to be out of print how to comp by Hal Cook I think his name is and I have a PDF of it but I really would like to find a copy of that book but here in that book, he does this and then he just adds more notes. So let's do two notes. So we're gonna start on beat one again and play two notes like this.
Let's start on beat two. of playing two chords so you could play an approach right from below or above let's do the same thing and start on the upbeat so one and Mm. Two and basically anticipating into the next I don't like that because it's on that beat one the beat one is kind of not so hip in my previous video on how to work with the metronome and all that stuff we talked about the charleston rhythm so it's the charleston rhythm is a dotted chord note plus an eighth note and we can do the same thing here we start on all the different beats of the bar so on beat one <laughs> to anticipate with the whole quarter notes. One, two, three. So this is for developing kind of a feel for where you are in the measure, in the beat, in the bar in the flow of things so that you have this uh, ability to always know where you are we also talked about the clave in my previous video so don't 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 go which is called a two three clave because there's two hits in the first bar and three in the second one and uh, it's a latin afro-cuban thing right played by an actual instrument called the claves we don't really use that rhythm when we play latin we, it's just like an underlying rhythm but it's a good thing to practice that even though that you normally don't play like that 
So the this is a son clave. So let's do that. Just sky tones. Anticipate the next bar maybe. Obviously it will sound better if we're playing in the more Afro-Cuban style, but this is for swing, but there's also this underlying clave in a lot of swing. It's kind of connected. There's also this thing called a rumba clave, which is just last note, it's an eighth note instead of a quarter note. That should definitely be anticipated. Those clavis could be turned around. Let's just hear what it sounds like if I change the swing feel or the, the style, which is another great feature with this uh, app. I really like this one called uh, New Orleans Swing. <laughs> So there I was adding uh, a little bit more on the top string, but this is not a lesson on voicings really. But you could obviously add more extensions or other notes on the top string. And then maybe different chords of when there's, if there's two hits in the same bar, you change the top note. talked about this tune woodpeckers no wood choppers ball which is actually is that uh, I didn't realize that but it is just a clave right let's try that rhythm it's, it's basically the same thing So now that we're playing more notes than just the guide tones, if we play three notes, another thing to think about is that how you're gonna play it, you could play two notes and then one. Or maybe the bottom note and then the two top notes. Create rhythms like that. Do that with the bass note. But you want to be very careful. I find that modern plays do a lot of that, like Cutthroat, Sunwinkle, and Mike Reno. They play bass lines, but it's very like percussive, and don't you don't want to get in the way of the bass player. So you have to like know what you're doing when you're adding bass notes. Another very important thing to understand in jazz rhythm is the kind of the dotted chord note. So there is a dotted chord note at the end of the clave, right? If we continue on that, that's dotted chord notes.
it's like I'm adding another pulse on top of the pulse. That's kind of tricky to do at first. It adds up every third bar. Before you do that, if you can't do that, might be a good idea to kind of edit it into a four bar phrase, which means I'm gonna make the last dotted quarter note of that, or the last quarter note of a four bar phrase as a regular quarter note. Then it kind of adds up as a four bar phrase. Sounds like this. Um. So let's do that with the chords. And every time there's a quarter note anticipation, I play the chords of the next bar. Let's see what that sounds like. player here's the Dave Holland concept there's just a bunch of threes right the dotted quarter note is three eight notes and then the last quarter note is a two so it's three 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 etc and a two you could move that quarter note to any other place in that series of notes let's say you start with it instead it sounds like this amount of combinations right you could put that anywhere that's just something i saw a workshop or a clinic with dave holland when he talked about that and he obviously has master of any rhythmic situation now if you want to play consistent eighth notes consistent dotted quarter notes it's going to add up every third bar so that's a little bit trickier but it works over solar because it's a 12 bar tune so it's gonna add up every time the chorus starts over. It sounds like this. Let's actually slow it down a little bit. Dotted quarter notes. Let's comp like that. A solo ding device. I have mentioned this before, and every time I do, there's always somebody commenting that it doesn't add up because I'm not considering the swing. I really don't understand what they mean. Maybe they think that swing is triplets. It's not. Uh, this is actually great for developing a swing feel. So I could also make a video about what swing feel is, but it's a little bit more difficult to talk about. It's more abstract and uh, a matter of personal taste, but it's definitely not triplets, that's for sure. It's a little bit that you're emphasizing the upbeats. It's also totally depending on if it's old jazz and more modern jazz. But this is one of the secrets, I think, the clave and the dotted chord note. You could also do groups of fives and sevens. And I have made a video about that. I think it's called spicing up your rhythm or comping or something like that. And uh, if you want to explore that stuff, you can watch that video. 
the idea is not that you cop like that. It's more like when you're interacting with a band and they get into that kind of rhythm, like dun 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 dun, like a five or a seven, dun 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 dun, like. You want to be able to kind of go along with it, like keep up with that so that you don't get lost and lose where the time is. So you need to work on that, but it's not like you're comping like that, if you know what I mean. Another thing that is really good to do is if you can find the charts of big band guitar charts, or it could be piano, ideally guitar parts, just try to play along with those. I did find a website where it's called uh, lushlifemusic.com or something where I find a few. So that's a good idea to practice along with because it also gives you an idea of uh, how to comp jazz guitar. You should also find uh, compers that you like, just like you would find soloists that you like. Listen to how people comp and try to figure out what they're doing. And I mean, the best compers, let's be honest, are, are piano players. I really like playing along with the Miles Davis recording. There's one called Relaxing with the Miles Davis Quintet. It's pretty, I'm pretty sure it's Red Garland playing there, where they play If I Were a Bell and those tunes. Just playing along, you get a feel for how they're kind of uh, playing those uh, shots and those rhythmic, uh, and then the, you get a feel for the, the feeling. I should also mention that the book I talked about, How to Comp, we just did like two chords, right? Like we just did two, uh, one or two shots per beat. There's many combinations and you could make longer phrases work on that. And uh, so there's a lot more in that book. And, uh, well, there's tons of more than what we're just talking about here. So some other books that are good for voicings I've talked about this book, The Male Bass Complete Book of Harmony, Theory, and Voicing by Brett Wilmot. This book you could use for the rest of your life. So if you want to get away from the obvious thing we're doing now, the guy tones and uh, just extensions, which is super basic, this book can give you a lot more about that. And more modern players, they don't really do that guy tone thing, but you should be able to do the guy tone thing and then you should, uh, you can uh, let go of it. And this, if you, it all again depends. If you're playing with a, on a wedding gig, you, you want to play the guy tones. You, your job is to lay down the harmony. But if you're, again, if you're playing with a super modern situation and everybody's kind of playing outside and there's all these concepts, right? You could change the harmony. You could play half step chromatic approaches or even just outside play. The first chord, the melodic minor, could be some kind of diminished. So if you play with really modern play, they might play something like that. And just kind of play advanced concepts or just ignoring the changes altogether and playing outside completely for a while, right? So this, what we're doing is very basic. Another good book is Jazz Guitar Comping, Racing Your Chord Awareness. So I'm working on this book right now and I will make a future lesson on that, maybe even next lesson. And of course, the Barry Harris harmonic method for guitar. Because let's say you're doing that uh, dotted chord note. I'm just playing one chord for each chord, one voicing. If you wanna add movement, what do you do? That's kind of another topic, but you could go diatonically, right? Those are fourths. Barry Harris stuff. You know, but uh, I talked about that a lot, but 
when you play with uh, more modern situations, people don't like that too much because it, it's the same thing. It kind of dictates too much what the solo is. If you're throwing this stuff at them, they kind of have to play along with those. You're not. It's better to leave leave it open. Play as little as possible. Your job is kind of support and fill in the spaces to keep the music moving forward and give the listener some idea of where the harmony is, right? But you're not supposed to kind of, if you play these thick harmonic movements, it's too much, I think. So this is another aspect of it is how to play, you know, modally. We're not talking about here, we're playing diatonically, we're playing the guy tones. What happens is that today we, we play jazz, we're kind of mixing in the modal aspect of it, but uh, yeah, I'm kind of digressing. Another thing that's important to understand is that people practice these kind of inversions. So there's this misunderstanding that we're playing like that. But that's not really the idea of the inversions is practicing inversions is just so that you know how the chords are constructed. You don't really play like inversions. That it sounds like you're practicing, right? It sounds like la 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 la. You know, it, it's not music. It's just so the idea it's very important to know the all the drop voicings and the, the inversions, which I also have a video about. But when we comp, we don't really use the inversions like that. It's just uh, something I've noticed. There's a misunderstanding about that. I have one more thing to say about comping. You can sometimes borrow from other genres or other styles. So let's say you play really early jazz or gypsy jazz, right? You would play so comp like that could actually work in the modern context you can kind of sometimes throw that in so as a kind of an effect i noticed uh, i was watching that emmett cohen when they play really modern but sometimes they play like stride piano and stuff like that they throw in like early style of playing as an effect you could throw in, we already did, like Latin ideas, like the claw bit. So you're borrowing from another style. Or blues. So when you play in blues, let's say you play an F. You will play an So you could actually do that. It's so instead it's supposed to be a major seven there, but you play blues sound. George Benson does that all the time. And the blues you can throw in as a kind of a flavor. Again, you don't want to do it all the time, do it too much. It's ridiculous. But if with the right kind of, uh, in the right place and the right, uh, with the right attitude, it can be really cool. It's also like a gospel thing, right? <laughs> Or it could be something like... Okay, so that was a lot of information. I hope I remembered to talk about everything I was hoping to cover. And I have uh, these uh, rhythms written out as PDFs on my Patreon page. So if you follow me on Patreon or support me on Patreon, you get access to those. And... Uh, on Sunday, after this video is released, there will be another uh, Q&A for patrons uh, via Zoom. So all my patrons are welcome to join me 
there. Yeah, that was a lot of information. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and let me know in the comments below if there was something that was confusing or that you want to add to the discussion. And as always, I want to thank you for your time and attention and I shall see you next time.